In this training, we'll get into more of the details regarding waiver reimagined and the streamlining of services and including some more specific examples. The Department of Human Services Community-Based Services Manual, or CBSM, is an excellent resource for details on a number of waivered services. The Minnesota Department of Human Services Community-Based Services Manual includes the definition for the services, eligibility, covered services within the category, counting responsibilities, waiver forms if they're needed, process and procedure, and additional resources. I've included a link in the links that are attached to this training to uh, go directly to this resource. You can also Google MNDHS and then put the type of waiver you're looking for. Example, the DD waiver, CADI waiver, brain injury waiver, or CAC waiver. An example would be Minnesota DHS DD waiver. <clears throat> and one of the first options should be the community-based services manual. The manual also references current changes in services as a result of waiver reimagined. It's a great resource from the Department of Human Services and explains each waiver service in detail and includes background information and legal references. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about community residential services and family residential services for the brain injury waiver, CAC waiver, CADI waiver, and developmental disabilities waiver. <clears throat> the existing service, corporate foster care and supported living services corporate would be called community residential services may be simplified from two categories to one category. The existing configuration of family foster care and supported living services family would be simplified to just be called family residential services. Group homes, kind of the lay word for group homes, are now called community residential services. These are services that provide training or habilitation within the developmental disabilities waiver. Habilitation is very important and required to teach life skills, to teach, train, educate, mentor, challenge the person to be as independent as possible. They also provide ongoing residential care and supportive services. Service recipients could be adults or children, depending on the licensure. The service setting is a licensed setting where the license holder does not live at the same location as the people receiving services or corporate foster care or community residential setting. The new service now includes a full scope of delivery that was available in corporate foster care and supported living services, corporate services. We'll provide some examples to give you some more details. The first example is referring to James regarding community residential services. James has a service authorization that ends April 30th, 2021 uh, because his service authorization is after January 1st, 2021. We need to look at the new service menus available through waiver reimagined. He was, he had a reassessment in March for services through May 1st, 2021. He currently receives corporate foster care, corporate adult foster care, and employment support services. At the end of reassessment and service planning, James requests to continue living in the corporate adult foster care setting and continue his employment services. James will receive the following services after the initial assessment and service planning with a service authorization span of May 1st, 2021 to April 30th, 2022. He'd be receiving community residential services and employment services instead of receiving corporate adult foster care and employment support services. Another example, supported living services daily in a non-licensed setting. This is an example of a transition for someone currently receiving supported living services in a non-licensed setting. Uh, Theodore's service authorization ends April 30th, 2021. 
is an annual reassessment in March for the service starting May 1st, 2021. Current services are supported living services daily in his own home with awake overnight staff and employment support services. At the annual assessment, Theodore remains eligible for waivered services and the current support plan meets his assessed needs so he wants to continue with similar services. He would receive the following services after their annual reassessment with a date span for the service authorization of May 1st, 2021 to April 30th, 2022. He'd be receiving individualized home supports with training versus supported living services, night supervision, and employment support services. Regarding family residential services, these are services that provide training or rehabilitation like we said with the developmental disabilities waiver habilitation is very important it also uh, the service includes ongoing residential care and supportive services the service recipients are adults or children the service setting is adult family foster care or child family foster care the new service dividing design includes the full scope of delivery that was available in family foster care and supported living services, family services. An example using family residential services. We're referring to Barbara. Barbara has a service authorization that ends July 31st, 2021. Again, since her service authorization is within uh, the year 2021 and after January 1st, we have to take a look at it. And we have to apply the waivered reimagine services ongoing. She has an assessment, an annual reassessment in June for services starting August 1st, 2021. Currently, Barbara receives family adult foster care, respite, and adult day services. At the annual assessment, Barbara requests to remain living in the family foster care setting and to begin looking for new employment opportunities instead of attending an adult day service provider. Respite is provided to relieve the caregiver one weekend every other month. Barbara will receive the following services after their annual reassessment and the service authorization span will be 8 one through 7 2022. She'd be receiving family residential services, respite, and employment development services instead of receiving family adult foster care respite and adult day services the new services are family residential services respite and employment development services she shouldn't receive a decrease in services at all they should be the same again it's more streamlined uh, to make it easier to <clears throat> authorize the services Individualized home supports <clears throat> through the Developmental Disabilities Waiver, CADI Waiver, CAC Waiver, and Brain Injury Waiver. Individualized home supports is one service, but it has three levels or three different service options. Sometimes they're called the tiers, tier levels. Previous service was personal support and adult companion. Typically that was support and supervision in the community, it wasn't uh, a service that required teaching or training previously. And so it's going to be called individualized home supports without training. Another group of services under individualized home supports is independent living skills training. Individualized home supports and supported living services build in 15 minute units. That would be called individualized home supports with training because previously the services independent living skills, individualized home supports and supported living services did provide training or habilitation within the rate. And so the new service is called individualized home supports with training. Finally, in-home family supports, services in the parent's home with the child or adult living in the parent's home would be called individualized home supports with family training. In home family supports, what we call individualized home supports with family training. 
an example for it, individualized home supports. <clears throat> These are definitions to give you more information. Um, individualized home supports are services that provide support and training in a community living service category for people who live in their own home, um, designated their own home or their family's home. Individualized home supports can be provided in the person's own home, family's home or in the community, either in person or remotely. Individualized home supports is a single service authorized in three different ways, depending on the type of support or training that the person or the family needs. The first level would be support. The second level training. The third level is community living service categories. So the first level of support, the staff member provides a person with direct supervision, queuing, maintenance, guidance, instruction, assistance with activities of daily living, bathing, dressing, grooming, or assistance with coordination of community living activities. Training would be teaching instructional services through which the person receives direct training from the staff member on community living skills like cooking, cleaning, um, transportation, identified in the person's assessment, their min choices assessment, their long-term care consultation are examples, and they're in, indicated in the person's community support plan or their community services and support plan. Training includes skill building to acquire, retain, or improve the person's ex experience living in the community. Also community living service categories uh, through individualized home supports, a person must receive training or support, assistance or supervision in at least one of the community living service categories. Individualized home supports, uh, what are the difference between the service options? Without training, it's a service for adults and children to provide support, assistance and supervision in that in at least one of the community living service categories, and the person will not receive training. It's more for support and supervision. With training is a service for adults when they need support and training in at least one of the community living service categories. With family training is services for adults or children. For adults, it's when the person and their family needs services and training in the family's home in at least one of the community living service categories. For children and their family when they need support and training in the family's home and at least one of the community living service categories. Individualized community supports without training. Previous services were personal supports and adult companion. Again, these were typically for support and supervision at home and in the community, they didn't require additional training. The simplified option is called individualized home supports without training. This service is for adults and or children when they need support, assistance and supervision in at least one of the community living service categories and the person or the family will not receive training. individualized home supports with training. Previously, services that fell into this category were independent living skills training, individualized home supports, and supported living services built in 15 minute units. The new waiver reimagined simplified option is called individualized home supports with training. The service option is provided to adults when they need support and training in at least one of the community living service categories, this specific individualized home support service option would meet the developmental disabilities habilitation requirement, which is teaching, training, <clears throat> challenging the person to be as independent as possible, teaching life skills. The service can be provided in the person's home, in the family's home or in the community. The service includes both support and training. Training for the individualized home supports means a person receives direct training from the staff member on community living skills identified in the person's assessment based on their assessed needs. 
individualized home support with family training. The difference here is family. Previously, the service was in-home family support where the person, child or adult lived with their family member. And the simplified service is called individualized home supports with family training. This service option is provided to adults or children when the person and their family member need support and training in the family's home in at least one of the community living service categories. Service provided in the person's family, home, or community residential setting. The specific individualized home support service would meet the developmental disabilities habilitation requirement. <clears throat> Again, the developmental disabilities waiver requires that we teach, train, educate, mentor, challenge the person to be as independent as possible, and that those services or goals are called habilitative. The service is designed to provide both support and training to the person and the family members to increase their capabilities to care for and to maintain the person in their home. A note that the developmental disabilities waiver requires habilitation or training. The other waivers, the CADI waiver, CAC waiver, brain injury waiver, are for medically necessary services. Coordination between types of individualized home supports. A question is, can I receive more than one individualized home support service option? A person may receive only one individualized home support without training and one of the other service options, individualized home supports with training or individualized home supports with family training. If a separate provider delivers individualized home supports without training. So in that case, you would have to have more than one provider to have more than one type of service. The person cannot receive individualized home support with training and individualized home supports with family training at the same time. When a person has a need for individualized home supports with training or family training, along with individualized home supports without training, the same provider would be providing both services. He would need to authorize individualized home supports with training or family training because that service will cover both training and support. So that gets a little complicated, but uh, hopefully you can work through it with your case manager to find a good resolution. A couple of more specific examples. Individualized home supports, example number one, we're going to translate two services. So we're going to refer to a guy named Sam. He has a service authorization that ends 9-30-2021. And he has an assessment in August for services starting October 1st, 2021. He currently lives in his own apartment and receives personal supports from a company called Best Supports and independent living skills training from Awesome Accessible. These are made up companies, of course. At the annual reassessment the service and service planning, Sam requests to remain living in his apartment and continue with his same providers. Sam will be authorized to receive the following services after their annual assessment and service planning. The service authorization span would start October 1st, 2021, since his previous authorization span ended 9-30-2021, and it would go to 9-30-2022. He'd be receiving individualized home supports without training from Best Supports as a provider and individualized home supports with training from Awesome Accessible as a provider. Is Sam decided not to want two providers for this service, both training and support would be authorized as individualized home supports with training using only one provider. Another example using individualized home supports. I'm talking about Sarah. Sarah has a service authorization which ends 6 30 2021. She has an assessment in May for services starting July 1st, 2021. She's 12 years old and lives with her parents and her older sister who helps her support needs be met. She receives currently personal care attendant services 
and in-home family support services. At the annual reassessment and service planning, Sarah and her parents indicate that they would like to have services remain the same. Sarah will be authorized to receive the following services after her annual assessment and service planning. The service authorization span would be from July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. She'd be receiving individualized home supports with family training and PCA. In this case, in-home family support, the old name for the service, the old service, would become individualized home supports with family training. PCA would re remain the same because PCA is not affected. Another example with day services, <clears throat> individualized home supports with day services. John is the person we're referring to. John service authorization and 6-30-2021. He has a reassessment for May for services starting July 1st, 2021, and he lives in his own home with a roommate. John's current services are supported living services, and they're billed every 15 minutes with a provider called AOK -OK Provider. He receives personal support also from a OK Provider. And he receives day training and habilitation services with center-based work from Best Day Provider. These providers' names are made up. They're not real, but they're just an example. At the annual reassessment and service planning, John is his, and his guardian indicate that they would like his services to remain the same. John will be authorized to receive the following services after their annual reassessment and service planning. The authorization plan, service authorization plan would be July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. He'd be receiving individualized home supports with training from AOK -OK provider, day support services from best day provider, and pre-vocational services from best day provider. That would replace his previous services that he had before waiver reimagined of supported living services, personal support, and day training and habilitation. For more information, you can Google Minnesota Department of Human Services waiver reimagined. Uh, the information there includes really helpful frequently asked questions and responses from the Department of Human Services. Feel free to review the other trainings um, that are included.